Hi all, John here. Just a little short review on the ETTL triggers. They are Pixel Knights TR332s, ETTL wireless triggers for Canon. Now I know they also do them for Nikon and the code number for that in eBay or Amazon is TR slash 331. That's the Nikon version. As I say, I'm using the Canon version. I'm just going to show you a few short things here of how the menu systems work and how it affects the flash and stuff like that. Now, I've done some, I'm not going to go outside because it's hammering down the rain outside, and I have done a few tests outside. And the distance on these things is, I got up to something like 50 metres and I, I couldn't be bothered going any further. So, you know, I just. If it hadn't been raining, I'd have probably gone outside and shown you, but the distance is what it states. They really do go really far away, uh, well far enough than you'd ever need anyway. And the only one pain I'm going to show you here now is, I'm going to take the flash off. It's really hard to turn it on. You've got to take the flash off and then turn it on. I'm going to show you a little short few pictures of how these work once I've finished showing you this going through the menu systems right, I'm just turning on 50D now which has got the receiver on uh, the transmitter, I'm going to turn on the transmitter now which you can't see on camera and that's on, I'll now turn on the camera put the ISO down to 100 turn on the flash now I'm shooting, well watch, I'm going to focus and the flash should show, there you go, you see how it's gone to f3.2, the only thing you can't do from the, oh, I'm in ETTL now, so anyway let me just change my, right I'm now going to go to a 5.6, let me focus on something, I'm going to press the button now, did you see when I said now oh, there was a second, maybe a second, a, a second of delay, you need to make sure that you don't take your picture before that delay is up. Uh, before, so if I go there, I took the shot then, and the, the the camera actually took the picture before the trans the the signal had been transmitted to the flash. So you need to focus picture. Now it's on the flash, bang, and go. Now I held that a little bit longer than need to be. It's only about a second, a second and a half. Uh, briefly, just to press. Here we go on. And it just, there it will more focus. Listen for the beep on the camera, then you'll see how long it takes. Yeah. As soon as the camera beeps, really, it's not far off. It's about a second. And, like I tell you, you can, um, let's um, go to, oops, let's go to, I don't know, F16. You ready? And F16. So the ETTL works, works pretty good. Now, without touching the flash now, I'm going to go into manual mode by using the actual transmitter on the camera now the menus, let me just give you a few negatives here before I just show you this the negatives on this thing are no rear curtain sync which to be honest for the money it's not really a negative but I thought I'd mention it now what I've noticed when you put the flash into manual from the transmitter which I'm going to do in a minute without even touching the flash you can control the the flash power yeah but when you put it on full power and you take a picture and you look at the picture and then actually turn the flash on to full power manually without the triggers you get more power out of the flash it's really strange now some I'm led to believe I've read up about it and it's something to do with hypersync uh, they do a thing called hypersync do Pixel Night, and what that allows you to do, um, it's a real bonus actually, it, la it allows you to, even though you're in manual mode with the triggers, you can actually use high speed sync still, so you can still take a picture at 800 f of a second, or 1, 2000, or 4000, or 8000, in manual, but what it does do, it's meant to take a stop away from flash, and that's what, what you might notice if you're using them in manual, and you think, this flash should be illuminating that subject to f20 f22 from a meter away i know that that'll be why you lose a little bit of power but i found a way around it if you actually set your, all your pixel nights to ettl and manually go to the flash which yeah admittedly is a pain it's nice to be able to do it from your pixel night and you still can but if you need that bit more extra power 
put your pixel night triggers back into ETTL and manually go up to the flash and change the mode of the flash and do it that way and you'll see that you'll get the full power out of your flash then and it's a really good idea just thought I'd mention that let me just have a look um, obviously they're ETTL triggers so that's another good point they have no rear curtain sync, loss of at full power, I've just said that. You get a couple of random bursts if you press your shutter button too quick. So it'd be no good for, these triggers would actually be no good for continuous shooting. They'd be absolutely useless because they need that slight delay before it's transmitted across. But for everything else, they'd be fine. And another another thing, the quite fiddly menus a bit weird in, in the Pixel Night to control the flash in manual but you can do it and I'm going to show you that after I've just showed you this. Anyway, let's get on to beep and it's transmitted to the flash. Right? I'm going to now set the flash. You hold the set button, which I'm going to show you anyway. Right, I'm now getting a group. but I'll show you this later. Right, I've got ETTL. Now I'm going to, I'm going to take a zoom. There, you see how the flash, I don't know if you can see it, because the light's a bit weird. But, but what I've done there, I've just gone into manual without even touching the flash. I've used the pixel nights. Oh yeah, I'm looking on screen, you should better see it. I'm now going to, but to go back into the pixel night again, which I'm going to show you shortly. You've got to hold the set button. I'm holding it, I'm holding it. Now I've got a flash. It's flashing on the group. Now I'll show you after it. I press the group, now I've got the, now I'm turning it back up again. I'll turn it on to full now. Uh, no, I'll turn it on to... Uh, minimum power as you can see 1 to 8 like you can't control the zoom um, that, that's at set at 50mm so if you wanted to do that in manual you've got to manually do the zoom but yeah you can control the power settings and it works fine I mean that flash just went off then didn't it and then if I hold the set button again I'll turn it to uh, power now Yep, that's half power, and I'll do it again. No, right, uh, no, full power, and you get that's on full power. Uh, well, what should the speed amount 60 for a second? Uh, and like, because I'm, I'm in manual now, by the way, I'm going to shoot at I don't know 800 of a second. I am now. I mean, I'll take a picture of something. It's actually blown out. Yeah, and that works great. So, just again, what I'm going to do now is go and knock the flash flashes back into ETTL, which should now go back to ETTL. Yep, at f2.8, that's my aperture. Now, my exposure compensation should work as well. I'll put a stop of that on now. Yep, and over here in the left corner. You can see that it doesn't say how much, I don't think, but it, it shows you that the compensation... Hang on. And I'll check it off. And the icon's gone away. So, yeah, that's that's the um, the gist of the, the triggers. And they do work at a distance. And like I've said to you, that there's a couple of bad points and there's a couple of good points. The thing that I really personally recommend to anyone is I don't like ETTL anyway when I'm using off camera flash. It may be good for you guys, but I don't I don't love it. But what I do actually like about this, these pixel nights, are I love how you can put the camera you can put the flash into manual and you can still use faster shutter speeds. And you ain't gotta be an ETTL, which is I mean that is really that's to be honest, that's sold me the, the product on its own. Been able to just go into manual and shoot at 800 of a second or 2000. Now it does eat your flash power because I've actually done the tests when, when you obviously use faster shutter speeds, but you don't get the black line, so you can use. The only annoying thing that I don't like is the menus are a bit funny and that hypersync is causing you don't get the full power out of your flash when you're using manual mode from the Pixel Nights. If you use an ETTL, you do. You can get like F20. F32 or whatever you can get the full power out of it but and, it, and I've heard it's to do with hypersync 
but they have fixed it in the version 2 of the triggers mine is a version 1 I'm led to believe and I have emailed them and asked for a software update and I've not had a reply as yet now that's meant to fix that problem they've actually sorted that out so you do get near enough your full power out of your flash and version 2 ones are meant to let you use your in camera menus to, to control the, the flash not your pixel night but then I've just read they've brought out a version 3 which has gone back to reverting back to using the pixel night but they've made the a lot quicker to do where now you've got to hold the set button for 3 or 4 seconds just to get into the menu and then press a couple of buttons just to get into your settings whereas they're meant to have fixed it so it's just a couple of seconds on a button and you're straight into power outputs um, but yeah, I'd, I'd recommend them to anybody looking for a trigger and an high speed sync. But what I would say is, whether you're going to buy it from or where you're going to buy it from, I'd make sure that you're getting like the, the latest version of software installed on it to save and you have to buy it and then send it back. But yeah, they work a treat. And like, I'm, I'm loving the manual mode because I love manual anyway. I'm loving the manual mode and the high speed sync. I'd just like them to sort it out so that I get the full, the full bump out of my flash instead of losing a stop or something like that but they are going to sort that for me on a firmware update or something I'll probably have to send it back to Hong Kong or China which is a bit annoying but what's got to be done right I'm just going to show you the pixel night now and we're going through the menus on it and that will conclude this review right and here's your trigger this is the transmitter on your camera so once you've got it on your camera you've got to make sure that your receiver is turned on with a flash on then click this onto your camera turn your camera on then you hold the power button to turn this on in fact I'll just turn it back off so it's off now on it goes and you get this that's telling you it's on channel 1 so you make sure your receiver's on channel 1 then if you press and hold your set button this is what I meant by the menus. Now this is telling you that it's on group A or group B. I don't know I am. Group 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 A or group B. You can you can set the groups. See look it's even got me now going completely totally and utterly in reverse. That's your flash off, that's ETTL. Then you're going now onto your manual power. Let me just let me just turn the thing back off and on again. See, this is what I mean about the menus, you can't get out. So that's ETTL, <laughs> then if you press your set, oh, set button, right, to hold it back in again, this is how stupid it is. So you can, if you keep pressing your set button, sorry, you're getting your groups now, A, B, C and D, and E, they're groups. Now this is your 5D it's for your five D's is this setting. You have to read the manual oh, it's gone off. You'll have to read the manual to see what it does, but it's it's to stop you getting a line across your frame in, in the five D. So that's how to set your channel. So if I press the power button now, instead of the select button, I'm now in ETTL. Now that's fine, but if I press it again No, I didn't I won't quick enough. This is what I said to you, the stupid these menus. If I now press it again, now I'm in manual, that's manual flash full power. So if I just do that and press my shutter halfway down, it'll automatically knock my flash into manual. But to get back into it now, if you if you take a picture and go, oh, it's too bright, is that? You've got to press your set button, hold it. Now I think if you press it that way again, no, look, you've got to go all the way back again. And then you can turn it down then to half power. You don't press any buttons, you just press your shutter button halfway down. And that's that's the menu system. Every time you've got to hold this set button for there then you've got to scroll back in again so let's go back to there and that's done press that and that, then you'd press your shutter button halfway down and that'll just go off on the new ones you're meant to go one two and it's meant to be there oh you've got a light as well if you just press the set button briefly and let go you get a little light but on the new the new versions of software you're meant to just go one two and be straight into the power settings and stuff like that and skip the groups so it's meant to be a lot better and like I say if you get the version 2 version you're meant to actually be able to do all what I've just done there in the camera menus but for some reason they went back to back to using the pixel nights on 3 now I don't know why maybe some cameras will 
work right on version 2 or version 3.3 but yeah that concludes my review of the Pixel Knight TR332 ETTL triggers now my advice to you lot would be if you're going to get a set of them check the software version because if you get the version 1 yeah you can send them back to Hong Kong and get them sorted out but it's hassle so check where you're buying them from and and if you can get a version 2 version 3 then yeah I mean I'd say get them because they're cheap and they're quite sturdy build they do take the CR2 battery they're quite a sturdy build and the idea of being able to use high speed sync in manual mode I mean I don't like ETTL I've said that before not not for portraits and stuff the, you want a constant flash output but being able to use your, your high speed sync is fantastic I mean you can't knock it I mean it's what everybody strives and what everybody wants but usually you can only do it in, in ETTL like, on, on high speed sync well I think Pixel and I call it hyper hyper sync it's called or something like that so yeah um, I'm sure that I'm gonna like these once they've been reflashed I like them now anyway but once they've been flashed just to make the menu a bit easier to access and to sort out my full power problem which they're actually saying isn't a problem they did it if you google it it explains why they've done it but they say they've sorted it in the newer version so I don't quite know but anyway I hope you enjoyed this review and thanks for watching and just another short thing before I go, which I do on all my videos. I, they've actually emailed me and they've brought out a new trigger. It's not actually out yet. So, to be honest, it could be a toss-up whether to wait for them or get this. The new trigger is called a King. It's made by the same people, but it's called a King. Now, it's a very similar unit, but what you can do with that one, where this is the receipt transmitter that goes on your camera, on the new ones, they're like the new Pocket Wizards. You can put it onto your camera then put your flash on top of it. So you can still use your ETTL on, flash on your camera and then have another one off camera. Because at the minute when you put this on obviously it goes in your hot shoe and you can't put a flash on your camera. So they've done that and they support rear curtain sync I do believe. And also they, let me just think now the term what else they do. You can use the camera menu systems fully on them. So you can actually, if you've got an ETTL2 flash, like, especially, I'm talking the Canon version here, not the Nikon, but if you've got the ETTL2 flashes like the the 580X2 and the 430X2 and stuff like that, you can, you can definitely use the full menu system, like the creative lighting system on your camera, on your, if you've got a 60D or a 550D, uh, sorry, a 600D, you can use the creative lighting system now with those units you can also do that as well all from the menu so it makes it messing around pressing stupid buttons like this because I don't know about you guys but I know my camera menus really well so it would be nice if I could whip into there and do power on my external flashes but I have bought these now and I am going to stick with them but if you're not in a rush I would give it I think they're going to be out in a month two months they're called Kings and they actually might be the, the better alternative they're still going to do hypersync as well so you'll still better get the benefits of this one here by going into manual mode and using hypersync and so yeah another thing i found these useful for which i forgot to mention was if you've got your brolly eye up and stuff like that and you're in manual mode you can actually change the power from the pixel night which is quite a bonus really because it means you don't have to go and disturb your brolly if you're taking pictures of a bride or something like that which I'm going to be in a week or so so I'll be trying it out make sure it works 100% all day if I want to turn my umbrella up and down I ain't got to rely on my assistant to come over I can just put it up on stand if it's a bit bright all the pixel night silly menu button but it will do the job even though it'll take me a couple of seconds longer